Welcome back to the Crochet Crowders. Those are my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are moving on to the hats. These are for the Christmas puzzle and what we're going to be doing is applying the hats and the hats are actually sewn at the end of the project. So what it is when you take off the top here that I left on the yarn label there so I know what it is. But what it is is just a flat top and then this is put around it and then sewn into position. And we have two different types of hats. We have a solid and we have the stripe. So I have that information for you today. So here are the two hats. They're both exactly the same pattern. The difference is is that one's striped and one's not. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> Rocket science. So if you're doing the green one or a striped one, the first four rows are green and then three red, three green, three red, three green. So what I've done is that I've written the instruction which I will show you in a way that we'll be able to follow along. Now for this particular one there is no um, continuous rounds. So I decided for myself is that I was trying to do it and it, and it was just looking terrible. So what I wanted to do is I'm gonna show you a tip on how to really kinda hide in where the stop and start is. It is technically, it's right here if you can see that. So um, sometimes you can get it pretty close and other times it's not. So uh, but my point being is that once you put it on when you fold it over and it falls over you kinda want it to have so the seam line is in. Now if it's a regular color like this it's a continuous spiral. So you're gonna start off in the bottom and just go continuously around and you move up your stitch markers. So there's absolutely no seaming at all. So when you go to finish at the end you'll just slip stitch to the next available one and then it will flatten off. Leave up a long strand here and then you're gonna sew that in. Let's talk pom pom. Pom pom is just a handmade one using a pom pom tool. I'm going to apply that pom pom uh, tutorial at the end of this video. And what I did is that I mixed the regular white yarn and the fluff yarn together. This fluff yarn, the the, it, the ends can fray until you really give it a good bang out so be aware of that. In retrospect I probably would have just used the regular yarn instead of adding the fluff to it but you know you learn. So it doesn't fray exa uh, for example on here because all the yarn is intact. It's just like when you're trimming the ends of anything that the end pieces can kind of bleed out on you. So let's uh, go through to the instruction and let's talk about that next. So let's take a look at the instructions and here we go. I've written this in a way that the elf people can have a really good time doing it to be able to follow it easier so that you're not questioning the colors. So when we go to start off for the elf version you'll start off with green and then you'll go to red and then green, red and etc. and you'll follow it all the way to the end. The last piece should be red. If you are doing the Santa uh, version hat which is for the reindeer or Santa or just a solid color. All you just need to do is make this in a continuous round. So how it's done for the elf is slightly different and that's why you're on today's video. So today's video I'm going to show you how to do the elf version as a round itself and I'm gonna show you a little tip on being able to hide that uh, slip stitch uh, edge in and that's what we're gonna be going for today. So I'm going to start off with the solid one first and you're gonna have to rely on these instructions. Let me just tell you quickly about that. So in tutorial format I could drag you through up to 31 rounds. I don't need to. All you just need to do is look at this thing and what we have is that the first row we're going to chain two and you'll put six half double crochets in the second chain if you're doing the solid color and then you're going to then put a stitch marker on the last stitch. Then in the next one you're going to increase so there will be two uh, half double crochets into the same stitch around so you end up with 12 and the next one is one half double crochet around so you end up with 12 and then the next one is one half double crochet and then an increase so one and then two into the next and etc. So as you're following it along you can check it. So each one of these sections here after the section there's three rows. The first two are just a half double crochet round and the next one is an increase. So half double crochet two in a row and then the next one has two. So what I'm going to rely on you to, to be able to check this off. So as you're doing it when, if you're an elf you'll be changing the color and if you're not you'll just continue along and just do this as you go. So we're gonna be dragging up our stitch marker when it comes to doing the Santa version and then for the elf version it'll be very obvious on what row that you're on. So let's uh, begin and I'm gonna show you the Santa version first and then you're gonna follow the instructions and go and then for the elf will be just later on in today's tutorial. You can look at the time marker in the video description of this video. So to begin you just need a stitch marker or a spare piece of yarn that's relatively long and we're gonna be dragging that through in order to keep the count for the Santa version. You're also gonna be using the larger size hook. So it says five millimeter but if you sub that hook for the main body itself use that same size hook that you subbed with. In my case it's gonna be a four millimeter. We're going to create a slip knot to begin and we need to chain two which will be the starting chain of your hat. So one and two and let's officially begin round number one. In round number one we just have to half double crochet second chain from the hook 
and we have to do that a total of six times. So we just do one and count those to yourself. So one and two, three, this is four, five, and six. And once you have that sixth one in, just pull this up and insert that slip uh, stitch marker in and that will officially end you with row number one. If for the Santa version you're gonna do continuous circles so you're just gonna start for the sixth one back. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This will be the starting one then for row number two or round number two. In round number two it says increase the round. That means there's two stitches. So in this next one you, uh, just right there you're just gonna put two half double crochets in each and you stop as soon as you get to the stitch marker that has been marked. So you can count officially if you wanted to or you can rely on your stitch markers if you think your count is accurate. So when you get all the way around the stitch marker is the last stitch of the group or of the round and so you'll put your two in here because this is round number two and you'll move that stitch marker up to the very last round. Okay and then that's moving on. So on your sheet with your pen check it off that you've done it so that you can keep a count. So let's move on to round number three. So in round number three it says half double crochet around. So starting in the very next stitch you just play uh, put in one half double crochet in each of the stitches until you get to that stitch marker and then you're gonna move it up. My point being for just following the checklist it's so much easier if you just follow that checklist and then follow along and you're going to notice the sequence is going to be really quite interesting. So half double crochet in each stitch around for round number three. So coming up around the last stitch is a half double crochet and then you move that stitch marker up so that you can see where it is next time that you need to stop. It's almost impossible to do something like this without a stitch marker. Let's move on to round number four and then we'll get talking after that. So in round number four we're going to do an increase. So the increase happens just before the next two rounds that are just regular one stitch in each. So in this one here round number four it's one half double crochet. So it says half double crochet in the next and then the next one is an increase. So that means that there's two into that one. So in my head the way that I say it to myself is that I say one because that's one by itself and then the next one has two and I say two and two however you wanna do it for yourself it's up to you. So one and the next one is two and two that share the same one and you'll do that all the way around for round number four. So when you're coming up all the way around you're going to notice that the last stitch in the revolution is always the increase if that helps you to know that. So you move up the stitch marker. So let's go back to the pattern now and let's uh, review where we are and then where you're going to be because now it's just a matter of checking off the list and making sure if you're naughty you're nice. <laughs> let's uh, take a look at the list. So right now we've just finished off number four. So in the next rounds the two of them five and six are just one half double crochet in each. So what I like to do when I go and pass it is that I check the first time I pass and then I check the second time I pass. So the five, so this is five and then six. The next one is an increase. So there will be half double crochet for two in a row and then an increase. So two share the same. So, so I would go one and two and then three and three. Does that make sense? So the increase I just say the number twice and that helps me to understand that. So you'll do that. Once you're done that you move to the next one. So you have two more rounds of half double crochet. So as you pass them check and then pass another round check and then this one here is half double crochet three in a row. So one, two, three and then the increase so then I would say four and four. So one, two, three, four and four and then check it as you go. You're going to do that until you get all the way to the end for round number 31 is your final finish. Then you're gonna fasten off and leave it on a very long tail so that you'll sew this to the uh, project at the end when you're doing the assembly. The hat is one of the last things that you'll ever apply to this. 
You can then move on and do the pom pom if you wish which I'll put a tutorial at the end of this and using a pom pom maker and then you can determine what you would like to do with that and then put that on. So the reindeer and the elf technically don't have a pom pom but that doesn't mean you can't do it and so that's what you're gonna do. So for all the Santa people you just need to move on and just check the list as you go and then for the elf people we're gonna start now and then I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to get rid of that seam line as we go. So let's move on to the elf. So let's move on and do the elf. So the elf has three rounds that are one color, three that are the next. The first four are going to start off with green and then you're going to start doing that three, three, three all the way down to the end. The last color should be red if you're doing it correctly. So what we can do here is that I'm going to show you how to get rid of the slip stitching lines that you have. It'll be pretty almost invisible but the way you put it on as I talked about will matter because you may wanna hide it just in case you didn't get it as nicely as it looks here. So what we're going to do is just like before with the Santa we are going to start off and the first four rows will be green and then we'll do the next two, uh, three rows as red. So we have to literally end the yarn at this point. So I tried playing and playing to carry the yarn. It just does not look very good. So you do wanna finish off that yarn in between and if I look at the inside there are all the ends. I'm gonna leave them in there. Forget it. You know you're gonna sew this onto the character anyway so why would you bother? So just make sure that they are fastened off enough that they will not come out later. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna begin and we're going to just change, uh, change the way that we're starting and stopping around and therefore that'll happen. So without, an, uh, without any more chitter chatter let's get at her and let's get our green ready to play. So I'm going to begin with the color green. I do actually count the rounds as I go as far as like the number of stitches per round and that information is on there. So as, as I'm increasing I do double check. So I'm going to create a slip knot to begin and I wanna chain two again using the same size hook that you were using before. So you're gonna chain a total of two and that's your beginning chain. Let's begin round number one. So the instructions are just the same. The difference is that you're stopping and starting a row so you're not going as a continuous circle. So in the second chain from the hook I want you to apply six half double crochets. So we have one and two and three, four, five and six. So now that the sixth one is done I want to slip stitch it to the beginning one. If you're not sure count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six and you're going to slip stitch to the beginning and that'll officially end you at round number one. So round number two let's check this off and go on to number two next. So number two you're only gonna chain one. So using half double crochet you would chain two. So chain one this is part of hiding that slip stitching. So then in the first one you're going to it's an increase so each stitch is gonna have two half double crochets. So let's apply that to each. So make sure there is six sets of two half double crochets. Now I can see this is the last stitch and what I want to do is I wanna show you the secret. So you should have one, two, three, four and this is the fifth group of two. This is the sixth. This one here is not a stitch. That is just leaning over there but we wanna use that to our advantage. So the last stitch here we want to begin with half double crochet and going in and pulling it through and usually I would just pull through the three and then you're done. But what I want you to do is go into this space here and wrap the hook and going in and pull through. So you're going to treat the last stitch when you're doing this increase or if it's the last stitch at all like the space is part of it and you're doing a two together stitch so that this yarn that I'm about to do is going to fill in the space that creates a that gap. So now you're gonna pull through everything and then you're going to slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet that you started with. So by doing that you're filling in those empty spaces that would normally exist when you do a slip stitch. I do this on all my hats. So let's officially begin round number three. So round number three is not an increase round so you're just gonna go one half double crocheting each. So we're just gonna chain one to start and then you begin half double crocheting around. So it's the last stitch that you wanna do that special technique I just showed you to hide in those gaps myself is that usually people wear um, hats and they put the gapping spaces toward the back but if you're standing behind somebody in line at a coffee shop it's the first thing I see. <laughs> 
So um, I'm very conscious of my own hats to make sure that if there's an opportunity to fill in a space you can do it. So by doing the two together as I talked about what you're doing is you're not increasing the stitch count but literally just providing an extra kind of strands there just to kind of fill it in. The trick is knowing where to stop. So I'm coming around on round number three it's one half double crochet in each and this here is the last stitch. Okay, so this one is leaning into this one. So this is the last one. So when I do the last one I'm gonna go in and pull through and then I'm gonna go into the spacing. So yarn over and into the spacing and pull through and then pull through all of those and then slip stitch to the beginning half double crochet and that fills in that space once again. So let's move on to round number four. In round number four it's an increase. So we're gonna chain up one to begin and you'll half double crochet in the first one and then the half double crochet is second time or two times in the next. So like I did with the Santa it would be the next one is one by itself and then the next one has two in it. So I say two and two. So then it's one and then two and two. One and two and two and one and two and two and then one and then this is the last one. So this here is part of that. It's a space. So when you're doing the two into the same one you'll do the first one as normal and then you'll do the next one but you'll make it share the space. So yarning over and go into the space and then pull through and that will give you the two that you need plus fill in the space and then you can slip stitch. So because this is the end of round number four we're now going to officially end this color. So you literally have to cut this color. I tried carrying the yarn it just did not look good. So what you wanna do is that you just wanna pull it tight and just weave it in around a few, a few of these stitches and then leave that straggler to the inside of the hat. If it really bothers you you can use a tapestry needle but you can pretty well get away with just going around a few of these stitches and then just tucking the tails inside. So we're officially going to move on to round number five and six and I'll be back in just a moment. So five and six and seven are using the color red and then it goes back to green. So the increase is going to happen on the last round of the color. So you're going to start off anywhere and what I do recommend is kind of like just jump around a little bit. So if you always are switching around you don't end up with a straight um, line all the way through. So I'm just going to join it to pretty close to where it was. This is where the slip stitching was and I'm just going to join. And then chain one and in the same one we want to apply one half double crochet. So you're just gonna do one half double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. I'll show you at the end on how to hide in that, that last piece and I will see you there in just a moment. So this is round number five. When you come up all the way around I would double count to make sure that you have the right number. So we know that this case there should be 18. So technically I should be close to 18 if not at 18 already. See based on where I'm ending here but we can verify that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. Technically if you weren't watching me I would have counted each stitch as I was throwing it in. So you can see that there is a space that appears here. So in order to get rid of that on the last one which we know is the last stitch is that we are going to put the two together. So we'll do the first one and then we'll go into the space and then pull all of it together and then slip stitch and then that closes off that space. See perfect. So then you'll move on to round number six and it's just chain one and it's one half double crochet in each once again and do this all the way around. I wouldn't count this round at all. It's just when you're going to switch uh, colors I would just do that and concentrate then. I'll see you at the end of round number six in just a moment. So coming up all the way around this is the last stitch. This is leaning into this one so that's just a space. So again just go into the last one, grab the space as well and then pull it all together and then just join. So that was the end of number six. So now you're gonna move on to round number seven. So seven is going to be an increased round. So we start off and we just chain one 
and then we have double crochet two time or two in a row. So not two into the same, two in a row and then the next one has two into the same one. So what I like to do for myself is that when I count this I say one is by itself, two is by itself. So I'll just say one, two and then the third one has two. So I'll say three and three. So one, two and three and three. So if your counts are right the last stitch should have the two into the same one and that's the, the very last stitch is the one that you wanna share with the space so that you can hide that. And then this color is officially done and you're moving back to green in just a few moments from now. So as I'm coming around I can see that I only have three stitches left. So the last one has two in there so do the first one and then the second one do it but then make it share with the partner, a leg with the space. And then that's it. So you're officially done this color once again and then you're gonna move on and do green and then red and green and you're gonna follow that checklist all the way down. Let's go back to the checklist and how I finished it off is exactly what you'll do and then you can see the point is now it's starting to happen and then you're gonna slam a pom pom on there if you wish. Let's go back to the instructions. So I've just officially finished up to row number seven. So I'm gonna fasten off and then row number eight and nine is back to green. So I would count it, make sure that you have 24 stitches. And then number 10 is the last one. It'll be increased. So three in a row and then increase. So one, two, three and then this is four and four. You'll switch the color back for three rounds of red and then three rounds of green. So it's the last one of each of those colors that has an increase here. And then eventually this one here will be the ending. Around, uh, this will have 60 stitches. So the next six rounds here, so 27, 28, 20, uh, 6, 27, 28 and 30, or sorry 29, 30 and 31 you think I could count is all just going to be just one stitch in each. So it's just a matter of maintaining that so you have a little bit of a balance and then that's what's gonna end you so that you can fasten that to the top of your, your idea or of your project. So what we want to do is get these done, get your pom pom done if you wish and then put the hat aside in your little box and then save it because it'll be the last thing that you're going to apply to your project at the end. So that's it for today. This is how to do these hats. They're really quite simple. Put on the TV just make sure that you have this handy and check it off as you go and that's what I would do if I were you and you were me. So we're gonna continue our puzzle again next time with something slightly different and I'll see you then. Bye bye. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pom pom with a pom pom maker that you may find in a store. I picked this one up here in Walmart and I know that they're in uh, major craft stores across North America as well. So what this is is that there's different sizes of uh, pom pom makers. This particular kit came with all four sizes and they when you open them up you realize that you think that they're broken because they're separate units like this but in actual fact you have to have them separated in order to do it. So some people use uh, for pom-poms. They use cardboard or they could use their hand in order to make pom-poms. These have to, I have to say, they make one of the most perfect uh, pom-poms you'll ever see. So today I'm going to show you how to operate these and it's the same operation for all sizes and I will show you how to do that. So let's begin to show you. So just put the two sides, okay. The outside hinge is going to be toward the outside and the other one is to on the other side. Okay. Match it up. Use the divots to hold just like you see here and just kind of pin it together. So you're going to do it in a way that is going to just hold it together as you do it. Okay. So it's just gonna be good and uh, they don't need to match each other up there. It's just as long as you're pinching here and it holds it and it just, it's just lightly holding it. Once you start wrapping it, it'll stick together without you having to hold it uh, really quite tightly. So it's just a matter of starting this and getting it wrapped around a few times. So I'm gonna use my left hand to wrap and all I wanna do is fill in the space on this whole half side. So I'm not gonna jump over to the other side as of yet and I just want to continue to wrap. So I'm gonna go right up to this edge and I'm gonna go right up to this edge. Now you can either count it out if you want to if you would like to be really super super accurate uh, with your counting so that it's equal on both sides of this tool or what you can just do is just wrap it and make it look like it works. Okay, so because this is variegated I'm kinda just jumping around a little bit and what I wanna do is I wanna continue to wrap now and as you get more and more it just sticks together on its own. 
So once you're satisfied with it, now you can just cut your yarn. So now I'm gonna jump to the other side and pinning those two other two together. I'm gonna do the same thing and just start it and wrap again like I did the other side. So continue to wrap this side and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, once you're satisfied with it, all you just gotta do is trim this other yarn. So what you wanna do now at this point is that you want to close this contraption. So just close it and also open up these clips and they are locking on to its neighbor but not uh, opposite to each other. So just close it. So just lock it and lock the other side. So now the entire ring is now uh, full and now we're going to then separate these and being able to make the pom-pom. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to grab our scissors next. So with the space that is existing in between just like you see here we're gonna run our scissors through and we're just gonna start on one side and work our way to the other side. So just going right directly in half. Okay. And we are just gonna gently cut. Okay just do a few at a time if your scissors can't handle it. And you do not wanna let this ring go. Everything is being held into place as you're, you're doing it. Now the size of your pom-pom is varied on the size of this ring but also how many times you wrap it as well. And you go right to the end. So you wanna physically see this gap as you go. So now you're gonna go back to the other side. Do not let this fall apart on you. Again holding everything together and you're gonna do the other side now. There's nothing holding these rings together so you kinda wanna hold on to it at that point. So right now I'm about to hold which I already am and I go right to the end. So now the rings are actually completely separated from each other but then it's still in the inside. So just gently put it down and I need you to grab enough strand. Now if this material is not strong enough to be tied then you gotta use a different material in order to do the tie in the middle. So what I'd recommend for you is that grabbing the same amount of yarn you're gonna wanna tie about two, three or four or five times in the middle in order to really get it to, to separate or to get it to really be tight. So just grabbing your yarn and what I like to do is that I like to use a, a, an extra um, strand of string as I'm being able to tie it to my project. So just slipping in between the two gaps, the gap spaces as you see here and you can turn it around and just bring it to the other side. Again being gentle about it and just bring it through. And do you see the hinging here? There is a space so the yarn will go in between that too. And you just wanna pull it through. And so just you start to tie your little knot here. So just let's do that. So let's just put that through and really give it a good tug. And this is going on the inside of this. Pull it enough so that it's gonna form it but don't pull it enough that it's gonna ruin it. So then I'm gonna go to the other side now, turn it over and I'm gonna tie this side. So see how I just tied the other side. Now I'm gonna come to this side and tie this side and I wanna do that a few times. So I'm gonna use these two strands that are falling out as my tie strands to go to the project. So I wanna keep those and I don't wanna damage these strings. So when I go to work with this I'll leave them out. So I'm gonna tie one more time and then we're gonna release this pom pom from the tool. Okay so there's my strand. So now I'm just gonna hold it by those two strands. So now I can open up the tool by just releasing this, these clamps on both sides. So they're on both sides of the work here. And all I can do is to open it up now and it will release the pom pom. So there's one out. And here's the other one coming out in a second. And there is my pom pom. So now holding it by the two strings so you don't accidentally cut it. Now you just fluff it up. Okay, look how perfect that is. It looks nice and full and you're just gonna take your scissors then and just any ones that are just abnormally long or just didn't sit right or just kinda looks like it's not working well then you're just gonna safely just trim it like this in order to form the pom pom like so.
and give it a good shake and look at it and that's how you would create a pom pom with that. So take this other than strand, strands that are here and you can attach it to a top of a hat really quite easily and that's how you use all these kind of little tools. So the size of the tool uh, then gives you the size of the pom pom. So if you look at it from this point of view see this pom pom it kind of matches that. So if you're looking for a bigger pom pom you can use a bigger tool like so you'll have much bigger and if you want smaller then you just use a smaller like so. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Your Inspirations as well as the crowd.com. Enjoy and hopefully enjoy your new pom pom. I'll see you again.